Hi, Stefan, the BMW DIY guy. We're back at the self serve garage here in Tacoma again today. We're going to be installing the Go Fast Bits Diverter Plus upgrade for my diverter valve in my BMW F32. This should be a really straightforward, easy install, and I want to walk you through on how to get it done. And again, just a reminder if you want to stand on top of any of my videos that I'm doing, please click subscribe, and in that way you'll get a notification as my latest videos come out. Let's jump into the car and get started. Okay, so we've got the car up on the lift. One of the very first things you're going to want to do is pull the belly pan, and there's about a dozen of these uh, eight millimeter bolts that keep the belly pan on. So we're going to pull all of those and then pull your belly pan down. If you haven't pulled your belly pan off or off recently, keep in mind you probably pick up a bunch of garbage up on top of this. There's going to be gravel and who knows what. So you pull this down, don't get a face full of dirt. So I'm going to pull all these, and like I said, we're looking underneath the car, in front of the cars over here. And the other thing is I'm on a lift, which is really nice again here at the self-serve garage so you can get it up off the ground safely and be underneath it safely. If you're doing this work at home and you've got a jack and jack stands, it's absolutely possible to do that, but make sure your car is on four jack stands. Do not do this work just underneath the jack or go to a place like this so you're able to rent a lift to get it safely up off the ground. So I'm going to pull all these bolts, pull my belly pan, and I'll show you what's next. Okay, so for, forgive the background noise, this is a working garage. So I've pulled the belly pan off, and then there's an additional plastic shield right here, and there'll be three bolts across the front. One, two, three, pull those off, and then this shield will slide off. You're here, so you're looking at your steering rack, and I'm going to move up slowly to show what we're looking at. So as you can see, you can see this pipe here, and you should see right there, you can see the bolt, that's the bottom bolt, of the three bolts of your diverter valve. So you're gonna have to get in there and be able to reach all three of those to pull it out. So I wanna make sure to show those, forgive the uh, little bit unsteady handy cam here for a moment, but I wanna show you what it looked like. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna pull those three bolts and I'll show you what's next. Okay, so forgive the background noise, this is a working shop and they're busy in here today. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, I pulled that, this lower cover off here so I get better access. Now you can see the bottom of the water pump right here. There's three bolts. There's two on the bottom, one on the top. Pull those to be able to pull this down and out of the way. Now it's difficult to see the solenoid right now because it's up and behind the water pump. But now you can get direct access to all three of the bol bolts on the solenoid to be able to get it out. So hopefully you can see and that makes sense. You can see the water pump has now been pulled down and sitting out of the way. Now, if you pulled the hoses, you can pull the whole thing out, but then you got to deal with flushing your radiator and all the mess you're going to make there, where you can just pull this and get it down out of the way. All right, so the next thing is going to be pulling the bolts off of the solenoid, and we'll have to reach up and beyond to get to it. Okay, so as you can see, the solenoid is out, and uh, that top bolt took a little bit of extra work. I'm going to talk about that in some detail later. Uh, it, takes a, it takes several extensions, a universal joint, and a uh, ball socketed or a, a ball tipped five millimeter long socket. So we'll definitely talk about that as we look at this, but now you can see we've got it out and this is the section we're gonna be taking out. Now, GFB includes some really good directions on how to take this apart. So I'm gonna say, I'm actually gonna tell you to, to refer to their directions as you read through this. You're gonna pull this gasket first very, very carefully, then you'll pull this out and you'll reassemble in the proper order as it shows in their directions. I'm gonna walk through that process but I'm gonna refer you to their directions primarily. So I'm gonna get this swapped out and I'll show you what it, what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so we're all done. As you can see, we're successfully reassembled. Uh, again, forgive the background noise, busy shop today. It's all, all assembled, looks absolutely amazing. And this is such a vastly better component piece than the original. As you can see, this is not designed for the level of, of boost is cut, that's coming off our turbos as we turn them up. So this really is gonna make a huge difference. We've got the three bolts to put it in and we're gonna be good to go. Okay, so the diverter valve is in. It definitely went in much easier uh, with the right tools than, than the other one came out, so reassembly was a lot easier. Now there's a couple of things. Again, the water pump is currently sitting out of place. You can see it sitting here, and this is where it would mount to its mounting plate right here as well. Now, also took off the mounting plate just to give more room to be able to maneuver in that space. So to give yourself more space, again, we pulled the three bolts from the water pump so it could sag and get out of the way, and then the three bolts from the mounting plate that it, that it attaches to to get it out of the way. So as you can see, everything is all plugged in and good to go. And now it's just a matter of putting the mounting plate back on, remounting the water pump, and making sure to plug the water pump and the diverter valve back in. 
and then reassembling the uh, belly pan on the rest. So I'll show you that when it's done. All right, one last view. You can see the belly pan's back on. All of these eight millimeter bolts are in. And again, forgive the background noise, busy shop today. So belly pan's all back on, it's all good. So all we need to do now is uh, put the car down, take it for a test drive. Okay, so back in after a successful test drive, drove the car for about 35, 45 minutes, ran beautifully, no errors, no problems. And this really is a fantastic upgrade. And I wanna to touch on a number of things that I went through and actually explain a couple of things in a little bit greater detail than kind of in the moment of how to get that solenoid off and back on. So first of all, uh, move the water pump, as you can see. So used the Torx bit uh, or the, the uh, Torx socket, excuse me, to remove those three bolts. And then I pulled the water pump out of the way. I didn't undo it. I didn't pull the hoses off. I was just able to move it and pull it out of the way. Then I also undid the three uh, bolts as well to pull that carrier or that plate that the water pump secures to and took that off and set it aside. That gave me the ability to move the water pump around quite a bit, which allowed me to get to the three bolts for the solenoid much more easily. Now, they're, they're five millimeter hex bolts. Um, so there's a couple of things to look at when doing that. I was able to get to the bottom one, the easiest, and it's kind of in this, you know, triple pattern, you know, one on top, one in one corner, one on the other corner. And the bottom one, of course, was the easiest to get to. I could actually get to that one without moving the water pump. The one kind of in that upper middle position was a little bit harder to get to and really moving the water pump made a huge difference. And then the top one was a bit of a challenge. So this is where I want to talk about kind of the tips and tricks, including one that was uh, introduced to me by a good buddy that actually worked startlingly well. The one thing that really concerned me is that it, I was really struggling to not come at that top bolt at an angle where my, my hex would come in and kind of at an angle and not be hitting it straight on and be, could potentially chew that bolt up and even worse, strip that bolt. And then I'm in a place where it's going to be almost impossible to get back out. Now, you replace the bolts with the kit. So if I bang it up, getting it out is not the end of the world. But the last thing you want to do is chew it up while it's still in place. So one of the things that my buddy shared with me was take your hex wrench and I could, with water pump out of the way, I could fit my hand up in there and get the wrench into your typical, you know, kind of L-bend wrench and fit it up in there. Now his one trick though that was really cool that I had never seen before is I had a five millimeter ratcheting box wrench. So I actually fit the hex wrench through the ratcheting side of my box wrench and then fit it all up into place and then I could turn the wrench and ratchet the wrench to break that bolt free. Once I was able to do that, there's also the, the hex tools that you can use that have a little bit of a rounded collar around or a little bit, and I'll have this all linked in the description of the tools that I used. But then, so your hex uh, wrench doesn't have to be dead straight on. I could have used that earlier, but I really was afraid of chewing that bolt up and I just really didn't want to do it. So the five millimeter little wrench trick worked really, really well. And then being able also to use a socket with a long five millimeter hex built in. And I'll have that also linked in the description down below. So you can go through and look at the parts that I actually used during the process. All in all, you really don't need many tools. You need you know, an eight millimeter socket to, to get all of the belly pan, those two belly pans off. You're gonna need a 10 millimeter Torx socket to pull the six bolts total for the water pump to get it out of the way. And then you're gonna need a five millimeter hex wrench or of one variety or another. And uh, that's, that's it. That's all you need to get through it. Um, so as you look at this, a couple of things about actually getting it back into place. So uh, GFB gives really good instructions and shows you exactly how to do it. Last thing I wanted to do was confuse the process by showing it and maybe not explaining it exactly how they intended to. It really is that simple. You saw it sitting on the workbench, sitting up. You very carefully pull that O-ring out. Don't make sure you don't ding up or chew up that O-ring in any way, and you should be able to get it out. Then the center core comes out, as you could have seen there in the, in the last little bit of video where I showed the old core that with the rubber gasket in it. And then you reassemble it in the order that it shows in the instructions. The smaller spring, the piston pin, the top cover, and, that, and then that really big brass piston that fits on top and with the big spring underneath that. And then, and then you fit it right back into place. Make sure that you put it back in the same orientation. So when you're underneath the car and you're looking at it, you know, the plug will be on your left, 
Uh, and like I said, you only put it back in the same position that, that you took it out. I, it may not even matter that if it went in back in a different orientation, but why find out, right? I, mean, I made sure to put it back in the same way. Um, the other thing is also we, you unplug your water pump when you take it out, just like you unplug the solenoid as well. So when you're putting it all back together, make sure to plug those back in. So a couple of things also as well about the DV+. Plus. There's a lot of conversation on whether or not you need to lube the, that new big metal piston. The recommendations from GFB is that if you really, it doesn't need it and it doesn't require it, but if you really feel like it needs it, you actually, what uh, the owner said himself is that what he does is he pull out, pulls out his dipstick, takes a little bit of oil off the end of his dipstick and just runs it around that piston and puts it into place. But again, you don't even need to do it. That also goes along with there's some, some wrong information out there that you need to service or take care of it or re-lube that piston. You absolutely do not. Now, there's also a big misunderstanding about that big main spring behind that new piston. That main spring is really what makes the DV Plus what it is. That main spring is providing that extra pressure so your solenoid is not venting as quickly and it bleed vents instead of it binary off and on and off and on like the factory does. Now, you can take that main spring out and basically what you'll end up having is a diverter valve solenoid that acts just like factory but will never wear out in your lifetime ever you'll never have to worry about that rubber gasket breaking that center new piston will last forever gfb says they have never had a problem with them wearing out they don't even know how what the lifetime is they haven't even succeeded in wearing one out yet ever so you would end up with factory behavior but a lifetime Worth, worth of wear and tear on it. And if your turbo screwed up quite a bit, that could be something. But what really makes it special is that spring. That spring is what is providing that pressure and counter pressure that will allow it to try to maintain more pressure between you know, lift and pull and lift and pull on your car with the turbo. Now, that's the other thing we want to address here really quickly is compressor surge. The DB Plus is not designed or intended to Mitigate or take care of compressor surge, and sometimes there's some misunderstandings about that. And the compressor surge is that catch up from your turbo where you step on your accelerator and your car is accelerating linearly, and then all of a sudden it surges because the turbo catches up, that pressure catches up. The DV Plus is not designed to deal with that. What it's designed to deal with is regulating the vent pressure between the two of them. So that bleed off pressure will happen more slowly, and it won't just be either pressure or vent and gone. Um, that will help make transitions between them and, and that will help reduce that gap between those, but it doesn't necessarily deal with you know, straight compressor surge. That's how your motor's designed. It isn't gonna do that. Now, the one last thing is that the, the DV Plus may change the sound of your car a little bit if you have a custom or aftermarket intake and you already hear the induction process through your car, you're probably not gonna hear much of a difference. It probably is gonna sound just about the same. The DV Plus is different than the blowout valves that you see on like some of the N54 motors and others like that. The, the DV4 acts differently. So all in all, this process really isn't that hard. I strongly recommend it, and it really takes simple tools. Again, I'm gonna have all of my tools listed down below to give you a bunch of options to get through it. Um, I really appreciate it. I had an extra set of hands at one point to help hold the water pump out of the way, which was really, really great. You could do it with one person, but it was kind of nice to have an extra set of hands at one point as well. So I wanna thank Go Fast Bits. What an incredible product this is. Uh, I showed the DV Plus to a good friend of mine who is a uh, 20 year plus master mechanic. And he looked at the manufacturing and the clearances of the piston, both the inner piston and outer piston, and was just blown away by it. He was like, that is some seriously high quality product. And I completely agree. So I'm really excited to have this in my car, not only as a preventative maintenance, as my turbo is significantly higher than factory, and so therefore that will last longer, and in this case, probably infinitely. But then also that shift between the two, that, that bleed off effect. I'm gonna get better performance out of my car because my turbo's not gonna bleed off as quickly. It's gonna bleed off more slowly because of how that valve works and I have that main spring in. Now, the last thing I wanna to touch really quickly, it is possible in, in some occasion for your car to throw an error code. If it does, it's actually perfectly normal and to be expected. Um, a small percentage of cars, mine doesn't, will throw an error code that there's something wrong with the way that solenoid is working. Your ECU is, go, is expecting, for example, the pressure to be zero because it expects the factory valve to blow it all off. And it comes back and rereads that valve and goes, wait a minute, I, I have pressure, I don't understand why. 
So it's not harming your car in any way, it's not hurting anything in any way, and it might be possible to get that, fa to get that code factory removed, or, or excuse me, removed from your ECU. It's certainly possible. It's something that I'm looking into just as research, though I don't have this particular issue. So, and in most cases, I wouldn't expect you're going to see it either. The uh, GFB has just reported in a few small occasions they do see it, and they have it listed on their website as something you might run into, but it's not going to hurt, hurt or harm your car in any way. So, I hope you found this useful. I have all the tools listed below. I really appreciate your support. If you like what you've seen, please click subscribe. It makes a huge difference for me and my channel. Uh, I answer any and all questions that I can. And I really look forward to seeing you on my next video.